Controversial social media app TikTok is back in the spotlight, accused of harvesting Australians' data without their consent. It's being described as a mass privacy breach and the opposition wants an investigation. Joining me now for more is the Shadow Home Affairs and Cybersecurity Minister James Patterson. James, thanks so much for your time. You've been sounding the alarm about the potential misuse of this data from TikTok in China for some time. Have you received any indication at this stage that the Information Commissioner will actually look at this? Good morning, Trudy. Well, I was encouraged by the comments that the Information Commissioner gave to the Sydney Morning and the Morning Herald and the Age yesterday when they reported on this that indicated that they were looking at this issue because it's about 18 months since I first wrote to the Information Commissioner and asked that they investigate TikTok because of similar allegations of privacy breaches. Uh, if true, it appears that TikTok is harvesting on a mass scale the private information of Australians, whether they use the application or not, in a potentially unlawful way, and that is that they're doing so without the consent of those people. So simply by visiting a website, for example, until this week, Beyond Blue, who've now ceased their relationship with TikTok, or still currently, Sportsbet, your information, including your email address, your phone number, your browsing habits, your internet shopping habits, could be being harvested by TikTok without your consent. And who knows what happens to that data after that? Because as we do know, uh, that, that data is accessible by TikTok's China-based employees, and those employees are subject to China's national intelligence laws, which requires they cooperate with intelligence agencies in China. But what would a review actually do? Hasn't the horse bolted in terms of this data that China already has it? Even if you're not signed up to TikTok, and we know so many people are, but your data's already there. You're absolutely right, Trudy. The horse has bolted, but there should still be very serious consequences for TikTok. If they have broken the law, they should be investigated, prosecuted and fined to the fullest extent possible. And that now amounts to fines of the many millions of dollars. And if they have broken the law, they should be held to account. But of course, that's not where it should end, because as we know, TikTok is not a good faith actor. This is a company that has spied on journalists in the past, lied about it and then been forced to admit it. This is a company which has suppressed content on their platform, which is critical of the Chinese Communist Party. So the business as usual approach to a company like this can't continue. And it really is now time for the Albanese government to act. They've been sitting on two reports that recommend action to address TikTok for some time now. The Minister for Home Affairs and Cybersecurity, Claire O'Neill, commissioned her own report. She's had that for almost a year from her own department, has done nothing with it. And they have the benefit of a bipartisan Senate committee report, which I chaired, which made dozens of recommendations of how to protect Australians. All they've done was be one of the last Western governments in the world to ban it from government devices, acknowledging the risk that it poses to government users. But for ordinary Australians, they're not protected in any way from this company. Well, we'll see where the government goes on that heading into the new year. I want to move on to the comments we saw from Israel's ambassador here yesterday. He's accused the Prime Minister of having a contradictory stance on the Gaza conflict. Is that an assessment that you share? It's a self-evidently true uh, assessment. On the one hand, the Prime Minister says he doesn't believe that Hamas should continue to govern in Gaza. And on the other hand, he has been lauded by Hamas for calling for an immediate ceasefire because Hamas knows what everyone else should recognise, which is a ceasefire keeps Hamas in control of the Gaza Strip. It keeps them in control of the people of Gaza and to continue to use them as human shields and hostages for their war on Israel. Now, that is an inconsistent and incoherent position. And I think it's driven by the Prime Minister's weakness on national security. I think he is being influenced by the pro-Palestinian supporters of the Labor Party who put immense political pressure on him and he's bowed to that domestic political pressure instead of standing up for the position that he adopted at the start of the attack on the 7th of October, which is that it is perfectly legitimate and acceptable for Israel to seek to remove Hamas as a threat to its people in perpetuity because otherwise we'll see events of the 7th of October again and again and again. Hamas has very publicly clearly said that that will continue. How realistic, though, is it to actually completely crush Hamas? We saw this from Benjamin Netanyahu. He said uh, in the Wall Street Journal, for peace, Hamas must be crushed, Gaza demilitarised and Palestinians de-radicalised. How do you even do that when senior Hamas leadership are in Qatar and that the bombing of Gaza without a safe passage does risk further radicalisation, doesn't it? Well, it's important, of course, that, liberal, that Israel uh, behaves like a, like a liberal democracy. That's why like, people like me support Israel. We want to see Israel uphold those values, but they also have a legitimate military objective here, which is to remove Hamas at least from the Gaza Strip, and that is an achievable military objective. They can be removed from the Gaza Strip. Already very significant damage has been done to Hamas's networks in Gaza. You are right, though, that there are some countries in the region and around the world who do harbour Hamas terrorists and allow them to operate from their jurisdictions, and that is something I think they should reflect on, whether or not they want to continue 
continue to facilitate and harbour a terrorist organisation, given the events of 7 October. Uh, I think uh, Israel should continue to prosecute this war within, consistent with international law and remove Hamas, because that is the only way that the Palestinian people and the Israeli people can live in peace and harmony beside each other, which ultimately should end in a, t a stable two-state solution.